So welcome to the next episode in our licensing and copyright series. Um, we've been looking at copyright and the history of copyright, and now we're diving into licenses. Yeah, so we, I think we need to start defining a license, or at least like a, a short definition here. So if you look at Wikipedia, it says, a software license is a legal instrument governing the use or redistribution of software. That's kind of heavy, isn't it? This is something we've seen before. This was the copyright notice in a file. And now we're adding a license. And this is a rather good example because it also shows like um, that it, uh, it's, it's one example of how to apply the license or how to include the license in your source code. So first a copyright statement and then uh, a couple of lines regarding the license. So what is a license? Basically, it's the terms of how you can use software. So we go from copyright, which you automatically get, which means that it's yours and nobody else can use it, to defining how other people can use it, under which conditions. Yeah. And the in this case assuming uh, this copyright uh, this file is written by me it's the copyright owner that is me who can put a license on the work nobody else can what what if there are several uh, copyright holders then all of them have to agree uh, that they should change the license all right yep unless but there are some tricks and some licenses and here you can see it uh, somewhere it says here either version three of the license or any later versions. So then you can change the license to later license, yeah. But you can't change it to something completely different. No, exactly. Unless that license itself changes the terms completely for the next <laughs> version, but there you go. It's a matter of trust. It is. So the this brings us into the uh, false licenses. And it's quite clear that uh, you need to, uh, if, if you look at a project, you, you need to govern, you need to have a license that makes it clear on how you can use it. But the important thing is an open source license is something, for example, the permissive license, it's something that gives you the full freedoms that we've discussed before. And the class of, of permissive licenses, it really sets minimal requirements about how the software can be uh, redistributed. So it doesn't really, it, it sets very few um, restrictions or, or obligations on you. So two classic examples are MIT and Apache. And they, if you use some kind of Apache license software here, if you modify uh, the uh, software, you don't necessarily have, uh, your modifications can be on any license. If you use the software for whatever purpose, then the uh, software using the Apache license software can be under any license. So are we, are we in agreement on this? So it depends on the license, which licenses, which other licenses it is, uh what do you call it, uh, com uh, compatible with, or how does it work? Yeah, uh, we come into compat compatibleness, or whatever it's called, compatibility. Uh, we can do that in a separate talk because it's, uh, it's a rather complicated uh, mm -hmm. topic, I'd say. But in this case, it's, the important thing here is, I think, that if you write software yourself, then you can use whatever Apache license software you want. And it, that license has no effect on your license. Ah, I see, okay. And if we look at another class of free software or open source licenses, it's the copyleft. And they give you more rights or give you more restrictions, it depends on how you see it. There are two classes of copyright. So copyleft is one like classification, and then you have the weak and strong, which are further classifications of that. The easiest to understand, I think, is uh, the strong copyleft. And the example here is the GNU Scientific Library, and it's released under a GPL. 
which is strong copyleft license. If you do any modifications to that, the modifications must be under GPL. All right. If you use write in a software, say like a calculator using GPL, your software need to be under GPL. So um, some say that GPL is viral. I I go for the other way and say that it's curating. So <laughs> the uh, Anyhow, it depends on, you, you can call it whatever you want. If you're using a GPL library, you have to use GPL for your software. So it basically propagates the, the, the obligations. So what is, how is use defined here? If you're on the same, uh, I'm thinking if, if you're just running on Linux and Linux is GPL, then your application will run on Linux. So it will use some uh, libraries from there, or how does it work? But, but uh, Linux is a special case, right? Because it's a kernel. I know there are there are <coughs> uh, exceptions to to how 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 to use it. But otherwise, use in this case refer to linking, right? I mean, yeah. when you link against the library through compilation. So, so I can imagine not writing every math function there is. So if I want to use uh, like the GNU scientific li library to do some heavy math calculations, then I, I uh, then my software linking to that software would be, uh, would force and, my uh, software to be released on the GPL. And that is then independent of it, if it's, uh, if it's a uh, Soft link, or what do you call it? Uh, dynamic or static? Dynamic or static linked? Uh, I've read so many articles and I've spent hours with lawyers on this one. For me, I always, and I've heard this from many lawyers as well, that it depends a bit more on the, the, the way, uh, or rather, if you have a very specific API, and then it doesn't matter. If because uh, the the linking is one thing with uh, with languages where you compile stuff, but I think of all all the other languages which are just uh, runtime like Ruby or Python and so on, there you would not even be able to say when you when do you link. Uh, yeah, it's runtime. Anyway, yeah. So, for example, uh, there is an exception to class path, which is a part of the uh, the free and open source version of Java, and they have an exception. So, it, it depends on the project. So, but in, in GPL was written with a C in mind. I see. Okay. And if you're using a weak copyleft license, such as LGPL, L stands, used to stand for library, but now it's lesser. So LGPL is lesser GPL. So imagine you want to do some cool video editing stuff, and then you want to use FFmpeg, great piece of software, which is released on the LGPL. Then your software doesn't, it, FFmpeg doesn't put any requirements on your software to be released under uh, LGPL or GPL or what have you. It does, however, put restrictions on the license you can choose for uh, for the modifications to do to FFmpeg. So the modifications to FFmpeg need to be under LGPL, but your software can be released under any license. So, so this basically forces everyone to cooperate around the library? Because that's the project and the common code, while while GPL takes it one level further. So if you even use the library, your code becomes uh, also GPL. So so that's the strength of, of that license. Yeah, and, the, and if, if we uh, sorry, and the difference between uh, a license like MIT or BSD and LGPL would be that your modifications. You can have them proprietary, or is there? A, yeah, exactly. Or, yeah, so you so, choose so whatever what, license you want for your modifications. Yes. So copyleft left forces you to to distribute your your modifications. I was about to say upstream, but that's not the implication. It's to your users and not to the creator of FFmpeg. While permissive, you can do anything with. So I mean, you can even turn it closed source. 
And, and for me, um, I, uh, I think I finished a piece of software today. It's it's good enough to uh, to release quite soon. And I'm using GPL v3 for that. Uh, that's GPL version three because for me it's more important uh, that I kind of foster a community where we keep sharing uh, source code. For some, it's more like FFmpeg. It's more important to be included in other projects. I'm not here to discuss what's best or, or worst, but I, I already have since I told you that I prefer GPL. Okay. What about the Mozilla public license? That's sort of similar to LGPL, the way I've seen it, right? Yeah, um, um, yeah, it's it's similar to LGPL. I mean, the, the, the plan for this series is actually for us to do a deep dive in various licenses going forward. So, I mean, if, if you have a specific license you want us to look at, just drop a comment or, or reach out to us on Twitter or, or so. I want to look at the Mozilla public license. <laughs> Which version? <laughs> version 2. I Actually, guess. I've read 1.1 1. 1 today quite thoroughly. So I can do that. Nice. OK. And you can find different charts. Uh, this is one that I've used quite a lot to see how, how, like, what, uh, how you can combine software. We're going to do a lot more on, on like, how you can be compatible. But if if you're, for example, using an, uh, if you have a, a GPL v3 software, that, that means that you cannot go against the the arrow. So you cannot use GPL software in an LGPL uh, software, but you can go in this software. You can use this one and any other that the uh, like so basically follow the uh, arrows and you're fine i mean the the interesting part here is really the uh, that a permissive a library under a permissive license can be used by by something that's copyleft but not the other way around that that's the really key takeaway mm. yeah i mean this is exactly the case with uh, open office versus LibreOffice. One is on GPL and one is under um, Apache license. So the yeah, the, the patches or the improvement to one of them can only go into the other, so to speak. It, it doesn't work in both ways. Exactly. Yep. So I think we have some kind of, uh, at least some kind of view on what, what a false license is and what, well, what a license is as well. Yeah, I think this is good. This really sets the scenes for the upcoming uh, episodes. Um, so as I said, the plan is to go through licenses, but the plan is also to to visit various organizations around this these licenses. We we mentioned the the GNU and the FSF, for instance, we, which is one of the organizations. But we also have the open source organization, and as you say, the Apache licenses comes from the Apache Foundation and so on. So, so we will have a whirlwind tour of the various organizations and licenses out there. So stay tuned. <laughs>